Hello, everybody, and welcome to our March 3DHP for the, for the Nation Interest Group Meeting. As most of you know, uh, we do these interest group meetings um, regularly. We interrupt our forum to do them. Uh, just a tad of project news. We are in our final project year. This is 4 for Potential. Uh, this project year ends December 31st. And uh, NISHIC, my understanding is NISHIC has a new project proposal in development. Um, as I mentioned, we replace the forum two to three times a year. And you can just mark off the Thursday, Wednesday of each month because something's going to be happening with 3D. And as always, uh, if you're interested in presenting your 3D hydrography work or have a topic that you'd like address, you can um, contact me directly and we will try and work you into the program. Uh, we're going to have a, a USGS update. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about our work plan for the year, a little bit about the uh, Joint Data Acquisition Planning Guide we'll be working on with 3DEP, um, engaging with culvert mapping good practices, the NISJIC mid-year meeting, and then hopefully a discussion about your activities. And with that, I'll turn it over, uh, I believe, Sue, you'll be presenting. I will start it out and then I'll toss the ball to Steve. Um, so for data acquisition for FY24, I'm sure many of you are aware that we, uh, Department of Interior received uh, their budget a couple of weeks ago. Um, and Alaska, essentially we're in a, uh, the same budget levels as we, as we had in FY23. Uh, so Alaska planning has gone forward. Um, we already have about 314,000 square miles in Alaska um, in work or available or finished, I guess I should say. Um, and another uh, 72,000 square miles uh, currently planned for FY24. Uh, that funding all comes from uh, a specific fund called the Alaska Mapping uh, Funds. Um, for CONUS and OCONUS, um, unfortunately, we're um, uh, disappointed to know that we did not receive an anticipated um, increase in funding that was in both the president's budget and the House and Senate marks. Um, so we are working with um, the level of funding that we had in FY23. Uh, I will say to those of you who have a DCA uh, application in, hold tight. I'm working to find some additional funding sources for the DCA projects, uh, and we'll have some final information um, soon. So uh, we'll, we'll be digging in the couch cushions to work through some <laughs> acquisition funding for this fiscal year. Uh, Next, I think it'll be Steve now. All right. Um, so we had an, opp an opportunity to try to put together plans for uh, FY25 at this point, uh, and also, frankly, for the uh, AWRA conference coming up next week to talk a little bit about what we have done and what we're planning to do going forward. Uh, and so that's these next couple slides. Um, first off, I just want to talk a little bit about what we have managed to accomplish here. Uh, as Sue mentioned, we you know, are we're at a continuing resolution funding level, uh, which with inflation is actually you know, significantly less buying power than we would have had even last year. Um, however, we, so we did get the, the final NHD products and services posted. Those are uh, up online and available. Uh, we managed to find a way to extend the life of the HydroAd toolkit for NHD uh, through the end of FY25. Uh, that had some dependencies on the Arc desktop technology that um, uh, were, were challenging, uh, but that's been resolved. And again, HydroAd should remain available through the end of FY25 uh, to work against NHD data. Uh, we've you know, published the first uh, hydrography specifications in decades. Uh, this is a, um, this along with the next bullet about the objective uh, data validation process um, is really critical towards uh, scaling the program. You know, the many of you have been involved with NHD over the years. It was kind of a kind of a word of mouth, experience based, um, uh, apprenticeship kind of based uh, uh, enterprise that uh, really worked. Um, you know, it it was it had a lot of very experienced people, but didn't scale very well. Uh, and so moving to, you know, fixed specifications and, you know, objective inspection processes, it's gonna help us scale that from, you know, updating something less than 1% a year of the nation, frankly, 
uh, to some place where we can actually look at doing you know, 5%, 10%, 20%, uh, do big chunks of the country uh, on an annual basis. Um, Sue, through her efforts, managed to get the data collaboration announcement out. That was a massive lift, actually, to get get through all the hoops and hurdles to um, get that cleared. Uh, if we had some money to support it, that would be great. As you mentioned, we're you know, looking all over the place for you know, a dollar here, a dollar here, trying to put something together. Um, but just getting that process in place uh, was a pretty big lift. Um, again, even without that, uh, we have accelerated data update. Uh, we were able to contract for, I think, 47,000 square miles of uh, new hydrography data last year, which is a little bit more than double what we received in prior years through the, the older system. Um, and we managed to consolidate the three, um, the three legacy data models, the NHD, the WBD, and the NHD plus HR, into a single really hydrology-based system and got the main stems um, migrated and um, um, published out to the web. So those are available for use and they're available for um, folks like the Internet of Water team to work against as they develop uh, addressing tools. So I mean, there is there's a lot of work going on here, um, even if it isn't necessarily um, showing up just yet. Um, and so talk about where we're gonna go for the next six months or a year, thank you. Um, so this is the, this is really the first full year of 3DHP. Um, we have got the gotten the service posted. Uh, that's available. Um, I should, should have thrown a link in there, but actually, if you Google 3DHP underscore all, it'll be out there. Um, right now, most of it is populated with NHD geometry, but uh, we're going to work on adding in uh, uh, elevation derived hydrography as that uh, gets accepted and uh, and approved. Uh, we're also working on making a web feature service, which will expand what we can do with that data uh, considerably, including uh, providing a download capability so you can actually get the features from the service rather than having to work through a staged product. Um, HydroAd 3D, we're planning an initial release of that uh, at the end of this fiscal year, uh, and then subsequent releases through 25 to add, uh, add additional functionality. Uh, we should have the first set of flow network derivatives available at the end of the fiscal year. These are largely the derivatives that are required to support HydroAd. Um, flow permanence values um, are expected to be calculated this fiscal year and we'll release those early next fiscal year, along with the first uh, set of 3DHP stage products. And then uh, on the horizon, but it's, it is you know, resource constrained here is reinstatement of the markup process. Uh, again, we know there are issues uh, both in the legacy data and in uh, sometimes in the new EDH data that are going to need resolved. We need to get that process up and running. We're just, you know, again, we're looking for, we're checking the couch cushions and trying to make sure, you know, every dollar counts here. Um, and I think that's, I think that was it for me in this block. Um, I don't know if we want to field questions now or field questions later. Yeah, any questions for Steve or Sue? Feel free to come off MOOC. I'll we'll also put some links in the chat. So if you're looking for those, please go uh, check that. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. Yeah, I came off mute. Ah, go ahead. Eric? Yeah, Eric, yeah, Eric Jesperson. Yep. Is that, uh, Steve and Sue, is that Great Lakes money still in the in the mix? Um, I can't confirm for sure, but um, that's one of the sources that I'm I'm working on right now, Eric. Yeah, one of the one of the one of the cushions you're looking under. Okay, it is. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, it's great. <laughs> okay. It is. It I absolutely is. And I, here, Eric, but yeah. <laughs> and I again, I I'm hoping in the next uh, couple of weeks I'll have some more firm information for y'all. Yeah. Cool. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I'm working for it. Yep. <laughs> Josh, you have your hand up. Yeah, uh, Steve, I was wondering if the continuous flow permanence values will be calculated on all of 3DHP or just the non-NHD data, the newer data, well, the that, EDH data. Calculate on all of it. Okay, thank you. Yep. I see Amy popped a question. Can you elaborate on reinstatement markup? Does that, Amy, did that address your question? And feel free to come off of mute. 
I, I, I can elaborate a little bit. Um, basically, we're, I mean, we have, we have limited development resources and we're trying to get um, HydroAd up and running first. And so we could do them both and take two years to do it, or we can do one and then do the next. And so we're going to try to do one and then do the next. Um, probably markup will happen. I suspect markup will end up happening in a similar sort of staged fashion of, you know, increasing complexity. Uh, so there are, there are things that are easy to change, like names. There are things that, and then we'll probably figure out how to change things on um, the existing NHD network. Then when we have situations where we have uh, actual elevation derived hydrography, um, those changes will hopefully be less common, but will be more complex to execute as we need to sort of develop into that. Uh, but again, it's really a question of uh, coming up with you know, the time and the money to do it. Any other questions, feel free to come off mute or uh, raise your hand. All right, thank you guys for that information. Sure. Um, Just wanted to mention to you all that the AWAR Geospatial Water Technology Conference is going on next week at the same time as the NISG conference, as many of you are aware. What you probably don't know is that the keynote is our, our own Subuto. Um, I was going to ask if you will be attending this conference next week, could you uh, put your name in the chat or just, just say attending and I'll see the name. Just wanted to, to see if any, um, who's going to be there from this group next week. And I know most of you are going to be going to NISJIC, so. Okay. Josh, Sue Phillips, Kia. I'm going to let uh, Sue and um, Steve catch those names. Yeah, thanks, Linda. And for those of you attending NISJIC, we're very sorry we can't attend both, but we're pretty, <laughs> have, a, have a lot of- We're humans. <laughs> I know, but we're humans. <laughs> so we'll see you at the NISJIC um, in San Antonio, right? At the In September? Correct. Excellent. Nice to see those of you who are going to be at AWRA. All right. And speaking of conferences, I wanted to touch base on the NISJIC conference next week. Uh, we will be having a Data for the Nation breakfast. As most of you know, that's our joint 3DHP and 3DEP uh, for the Nation breakfast. And um, Phil Worrell, Dennis Peterson, and Jordan Regine will all be there. They'll be leading the charge. I will not be attending. Um, and that meeting will be Monday, March 25th uh, at 730 in the morning. And for your convenience, Ashley the Amazing has arranged for us to have a room that is adjacent to both the the foyer where the breakfast will be served and the plenary room. So it shouldn't be too, and we'll let you out a few minutes early to get to the, uh, um, uh, to, from one meeting so you can get into the, to the main meeting that begins at 830. Um, I'm not even going to say it. Phil has a presentation. Uh, Phil, you're on. Do you want to come off and tell him what you're going to be talking about? Uh, read the abstract in the published on the website. Uh, I can't pronounce that either. So, hey, you're, but basically, you're looking at AI facilitation for uh, data searching with that of the hubs. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You're giving you're giving it away. Come oh, on. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a Come secret. On. Okay. It's a secret. Okay. Sorry. No, that's right. That, no, it's fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if, uh, again, if you're going to be attending NISJIC, would you put it in the chat? And um, I'm going to ask Phil if he wouldn't mind jotting down these names to make sure that he knows who's going to be there. Should also mention while you're doing that, um, that Phil is going to be soliciting folks to sit down with him and explore this uh, application that he's developing. So if you have interest in the AI applications, uh, or application to search, data search, uh, please make sure you find Phil at the meeting. And uh, he's going to be, um, and he'd like to yeah. talk to you. Is that a yeah. fair statement? 
A absolutely. And I, and I will be providing a little bit of uh, preview information at Monday's breakfast. So you don't have to wait till Wednesday to find out about it. Um, okay. So Phil, you're going to grab those names out of the chat. I'm going to move on. I will. Yep. Okay, great. All right. So I just wanted to give you a brief overview of our work plan. Uh, a lot of it looks very familiar. Uh, the things that have the black text, uh, we're going to continue with our project management activities, communication and outreach, such as newsletters and leadership briefings, stakeholder engagement. We do that primarily through this group, as well as the state hydrography interest group. Um, the We have of course, the form is our monthly um, presentations. Uh, Bill continues to manage the hub and update the information there. Um, the inventory of hydrography experiences. Again, we keep and manage and populate the uh, 3DHP activities dashboard. Please, if you have activities, we haven't had a lot of input to that in a while. If you have activities, please reach out to Phil directly and he can make sure that either your information gets updated or that new information is entered there. And then two primary activities, and we're going to talk about them both today, um, under support state planning, which we're always here. You know, we're always answering emails and forwarding folks to the, trying to get you to the right point of contact. Um, but to develop and publish the uh, a, a new planning guide that basically expands the existing 3 depth for the nation planning guide. And we're going to talk about that, as well as the culvert mapping good practices that we have talked about and are going to talk about again today. Um, our last task is always to provide program feedback. As most of you know, we have the uh, Critical Factors workspace and we'll continue to maintain um, the Critical Factors workspace. Any, um, probably no questions about what we're doing, so I'll just move forward. If you have questions, just come off and interrupt me. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're doing with the planning guide and let you know we'll be reaching out. So the objective is to expand the existing 3 debt planning guide to include 3DHP. And we're doing that because these will both be in that 3D national topography model resources. Um, the approach is that we're going to finalize the outline and develop a draft in cooperation with uh, Jordan and the 3 debt team. We're going to enlist stakeholder contributions as needed, and then we're going to vet with both interest groups. Uh, we expect to have expect to have a planning guide by August, and we hope to have. Uh, oops, there's a typo. It always happens, doesn't it? Uh, let me get my 3D and TM fixed. Um, and we're and also hope to have a uh, 3D and TM workshop at the NIST annual conference. So be thinking, making sure you're getting there. We've been lucky in getting those workshops on Monday mornings of the conference, um, so you'll want to come in Sunday, so just kind of pencil that in. And I'll make one more edit. We'll do that at the 24 conference, since we didn't get to it at the 23 conference. Uh, just briefly, what we've done here is that it's going to be um, similar content. And you'll see a lot of these things are common to both programs, but some things break out. Um, so we'll have specific content for the individual programs where they occur. I thought it was cute. Under gap analysis, under 3 depth, you want to see where you're missing 3 depth data. And under 3DHP, you want to see where you have 3 depth data. I mean, so uh, that's one step. And then um, obviously there's a little bit of difference in the preparation of the proposals. Data management is going to differ. Uh, differ a little bit since we're, um, as Steve referenced, integrating the addressing of attributes for the Internet of Water, uh, and data distribution is going to be a little bit different due to the data format. So any questions where we're going with the planning guide? Um, again, our coordinating the planning team, stakeholder engagement, we, we didn't see the need for a second guide simply because there was so much overlap in the approach because a lot of our existing planning the guide really talks about um, stakeholder engagement, coordinating the team, what should be in your plan, and how do you get money. All right, not seeing any questions, I'll move on. The other activity I talked about was our culvert mapping good practices. We discussed this a lot a year ago. Uh, it was a hot topic in Pittsburgh at the mid-year meeting, and we had a lot of interest. And uh, we that interest is waning a bit. so. We wanted to um, talk to you, get you all engaged uh, back in the project. I'm going to 
put a couple of links in the chat. One is to the landing page for the initiative, and one is to the actual workspace. If you miss it here, I'm going to follow up this presentation with a message to the group with link, a direct link to the uh, practices workspace. What we ended up doing, the easiest way to do it, was to basically, we created a Google Doc. And as I said, very disappointed that we've not had a single, well, I shouldn't say, we had one comment, but um, they didn't leave their name. Um, so I just wanted to walk through the document and give you a little bit of comfort level through it. This, that, these are actual excerpts from the document. So the first thing we ask you to do is if you're going to make comments in the not document, we register yourself here so that you can just use your initials when you put in a comment. So this is, this is the registry where you would put your name, your organization, your email, and your comments. This is so that we can follow up if we have questions or want to engage you in, in a discussion with others. Um, you're going to see, wherever you see tan stuff, you get to, add, it's where we're asking you to, to add stuff. I know this is a little weird, but because the doc, we doc, we had so many people commenting, we didn't want to use edits as suggestions, and everybody has free edit rights. Thank goodness for versioning. We can get back to things. So instead of editing the text, you'll see below, we'll give you a section like this, background, and then underneath you're going to see add comments below, and you're free to add any comments below relative to the text above. We have the same thing for the definition. Uh, st these are descriptive things, so this is uh, coordination, uh, data collection. You know, we're, we're asking people, if you can, do digital data capture rather than a hard copy form. And, you know, some folks may say, you know, may want to comment on that. We're also asking, um, suggesting that the line feature be used for mapping the culverts. And if there's an issue with the way that you manage your culvert data or or things that you like to do, you know, add it here. And again, the final document is going to be a NISHIC publication on good practices. And if you think these good practices are wrong or need to be amended, we need to hear your voice. Oh, I never sent them. Sorry. Um, probably of most interest to people is a list of minimum attributes. There are not many in there. I think maybe 10. And what we're asking for you here, for instance, here's the attribute name, the 3DHP main stem identifier, and we're going to ask you to link to the feature. If you have a comment on that attribute, you know, you can list your comment on either the name, the definition, or the attribute class. Everything else is really straightforward. Organization name, email address, uh, I forgot to change the table. Um, anyhow, and then at the bottom of that table, I wanted to make clear there's a, just a section that says additional comments. So if it doesn't fit into the table nicely, you can always just add your comments at the end of the re at the end of the table. And then the last item in there is a list of resources that folks can use. Um, there's some good uh, data standards out there. There's a lot of work being done with the, the SARP group as far as their field data collection. And you can add additional uh, comments or links to additional resources there. So we really need your input because right now this is just something that Phil and I and a few others just put together and drafted. And um, we need to know that this works for the community and what we're going to publish is um, meaningful to the community. Our objective is to uh, close the comment period in July, have a final draft by August, present at the NISJIC Annual Conference, and then have a final document published to the Hub um, in October. So with that, are there any questions? Has anybody tried going in there, got confused? Um, if you want to, I can switch over and actually show you just the, raw, the document itself. Um, what do I need to do to get you guys to, to come in and play in the workspace? All right, everybody knows what to do, how to do it. 
and they're going to come in and, and add their comments. And this is not just state folks. This is federal folks. This is private sector folks. Um, you guys know different aspects of using and applying this data. So you're, you're, again, your input is needed. All right, I got all your names here on the list. You didn't have questions, so you know how to do it. All right. Uh, I see Jane asks, is it tar targeted to state GIO coordination? Not at all. It is uh, basically the target is um, for people that have, to, for state folks that do culvert mapping, because a lot of that data collection is being done at the state and regional level, which um, Dan is asking, is this accessible to counties? Exactly. If those are the people we that are collecting the data, then those are the people that need to be answering those questions. You'll notice I put two links in 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 the chat previously. One of the links is to the landing page. We did a survey of culvert mapping practices and we present those results. Uh, Phil developed a dashboard for those results. You may want to go there and look at what other people are doing. That's a resource too as well. But again, through that survey, we found that a lot of this data collection is, obviously it's a difficult endeavor to take on at the state level. So a lot of this data collection is happening in local and regional governments. Any other questions? Okay. So this is your time. Uh, I sent you an email, told you to get ready. Uh, we're just hoping this, we try to use these interest group meetings for you all to exchange information. So I was hoping that we could reach out and uh, ask you all to share what are your activities? Um, are there particular plans that you're working on, or are there particular questions you need answered? Uh, you're free to come off mute and or uh, raise your hand. We'll see how it goes coming off mute. And if that doesn't work, we will uh, do the hand raising. And you all know I will start calling on you and ask you what's going on, so. Hey, Lynn, it's Dennis. I'll jump in here since you got the map of uh, the Holston. <laughs> uh, showing on your slides there um so yeah we've got our uh, pilot project in tennessee that we uh got a word from usgs that they've accepted the edh deliverables from our gypsy contractor and uh yeah excited to um dig into the data we're going to be receiving the edh deliverables here in the next week or two and uh, this is good timing. We've got our state GIS conference coming up here in second week of April. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're also developing our own 3DHP uh, hub site. Um, we are kind of mirroring it after our 3DEP hub site to some to some extent, obviously there are unique differences, but um, wanting to showcase this work to our community in Tennessee. And uh, we're also very anxious, obviously, as I'm sure some of you on the call are as well, to, to get word on the DCA proposal. We submitted a proposal uh, for Middle Tennessee uh, last fall. Um, so obviously, I know Sue's been doing the best she can with uh, challenges and with funding and the budget process, but uh, obviously anxious to hear any results from our proposal, and hopefully we'll get get some uh, some level of a project for Middle Tennessee for for this fiscal year. And that's all that I've Great. got. Thank you, Dennis. Anybody have any questions for Dennis about his approach or the project? Or um, thanks, Paul. Paul jumped in the uh, the hydro link for Tennessee into the chat. Um, anybody have any questions about the approach that uh, Tennessee is taking? This is Sue. I'll just pop in and say we're excited too, Dennis, that um, your pilot got accepted the other day. So looking forward to seeing those data and I will definitely keep you posted on the DCA stuff. Awesome. Thanks. Sue. She promised to tell us first. So <laughs> you guys will be the first to know. 
Uh, Jane, you want to come off mute? Are you able to and tell us about what you guys are up to? Um, sure. Well, we're continuing our pilot effort. Um, been working um, with USGS to make sure we understand all of the um, the specifications and requirements. Um, so we're getting close to having a sample of the data that we're creating um, to it, which we intend, well, to have a sample of the data to, to see if it would pass validation by their tools. Um, the intent is that we're going to be creating um, this data and submitting it as contributed data. So um, we've extended our pilot to two additional areas of interest, um, which will help us validate the tools that we have so far. We have not touched anything yet that involves um, urban infrastructure. So we're kind of focusing on more wildlands right now. Any questions uh, for Jane? Any, um, feel free. Come on, Karen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> did you have a question or did you just come, just come on no. to the? Yeah, I just joined. Oh, okay. Never Maybe mind. Not, sorry. Yeah. Um, any questions for Jane about what they're doing in California? The, this is Phil. I have a, actually a question back for Dennis. Uh, when you say pilot accepted, what, what do you mean? So the gypsy contractor completed the, all the EDH work. They submitted that to USGS and USGS did their independent QAQC and it's passed their internal processes for acceptance. So now the data is going to be moved into the, you know, preparation for the full-blown 3DHP data model. And then at some point, hopefully in the near future, you know, publication to the, uh, the rest endpoint uh, for publishing for the official 3DHP data. Right. So you're done. You, you are done. Well, I mean, when you say we're done, I mean, we're, well, USGS isn't done. No, no, but you are. You you have completed your your DCA uh, or yeah. your pilot efforts. Well, it's all no, now in USGS. Uh, so the pilot was not part of a DCA. Oh, okay. The pilot okay. was fully funded by uh, the state. Um, so there was no partnership dollars. Okay. So it's uh, contributed data. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. well, no, it's not contributed yeah. data. I mean, we're going through, we're going through okay. USGS and Gypsy. It's just the funding is one hundred percent coming from the state. Oh, That's okay. Huh. Yeah. To be clear, Dennis wanted to do a pilot and um, fully funded a ten-digit hydrologic unit contracted through USGS GPSC. The data went through our validation processes. And when we say accepted, it means the data has been shown to meet our specification um, and uh, will be ingested into the 3DHP when that uh, process is uh, stood up. And Steve showed on the slides, I think hopefully at the very beginning of next federal fiscal year, we'll be seeing that happen. Does that help? Great. Yes, thanks, thanks. That's um, Eric, I see you have would mention hydro enforced DMs. Do you or, or is Ellen? Do either one of you you want to come on and explain that? I didn't see Ellen on the call today. Is she? I don't you either. No, I, don't, I didn't think I didn't think she got on. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, our our lidar was collected along county lines, and the watersheds conveniently don't follow them. And we had our our uh, thirty four hundred square mile. Raystown pilot, the, the hydro is all complete. And, and one of the nice surprises, I, I guess I didn't read the task order close enough, that the first one of the first work products is a DEM that kind of normalized data from multiple LIDAR collections. Uh, and then the, the work product is a, a hydro-enforced DEM still in the 
quality check since that's another another work product for which the uh, 3D HP program is developing protocols. But it's got us thinking about watersheds as 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 packages, you know, whether it's a Huck 12 for for LIDAR packaging or, you know, DEM packaging. We have a county that's got some pretty dense 3D imagery and LIDAR and, and it's thinking about packaging by Huck 12s across this whole county. So, it, and it's making us think about data management and data delivery for something that that's more logical spatially than than counties, since the counties right. aren't since the counties aren't really uh, in Pennsylvania anyway aren't aren't avid users of the lidar. We did a, a lidar and imagery survey. They they pitched in uh, 40, 40 might have pitched in on the the imagery and about half a dozen on the lidar. They're just not it's not it's not meeting their needs or else they're they're ordering derivative products or ordering products that they don't want to go through the work to get, make them. Anyway, I, it, it's a cool product. I have, I have an image that shows the counties and the watersheds, but I'm not certain that I'm a good, that'd be good to share here. Um, Sean responded in the chat. Can you talk about that normalization across products? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> Kathy yeah. Powers is on here, maybe from NV5. They were the contractor. She was involved intimately in the project. I don't know what I don't know what it took. You know, but there were different dates, different sensors, you know. Sure. Lighting collected over a course of a couple of years. Yeah, Kathy, can you fill us in? Sure. Um, we for the Racetown project, we started with the LIDAR point cloud. Um, and we essentially made boundaries of each LIDAR collection um, and prioritize sort of newer data over older data and stitch together those LIDAR point clouds um, and recreated the DEMs in the CONUS Albers projection for the 3DHP program, all delineated by Huck 8. This is Sean from Minnesota. How, how do you account then in that situation for landscape change, knowing that LIDAR is a temporal representation and a snapshot in time, and I would understand why someone would want to do a mashup, but you could have areas with, with drastic change, especially around hydro, hydrologic features where erosive features have caused the landscape to change immensely. Can, can you expand on that a little bit? I, I see others have questions around this as well. Sure, um, at some point, uh, there's only so much you can do. Um, within the Raystown project, we didn't actually see any significant um, offsets or anything that would you know drastically affect the hydrography, uh, maybe a couple centimeters here, or there, you know, a isolated feature. Um, but it's certainly going to happen, and we've seen it in other projects. Um, and I think uh, the, the best you can do is either utilize, um, well, is utilize the 3DHP schema and the attributes available within that to kind of denote those areas within your vector product to say, hey, either there's a DEM limitation here, or we can't enforce the monotonicity of the Z values because you know, river levels change between projects. Uh, and that's that's just gonna have to be part of the data and and metadata of the product, I think. Okay, and what where my mind is going is maybe maybe the question I should ask first is is why? What what was the driving force behind that concept? I guess I'm not sure what you mean. I think it goes back to the fact that LIDAR acquisitions just don't happen uh, at the watershed level all the time. Uh, a lot of the times it's counties or states um, or dictated by funding, dictated by weather, how much you can get acquired in a season. Um, I, I think it's just a, the nature of LIDAR collection. So you were trying to find to 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 have a, a more consistent data set of lidar points 
to fill in your entire watershed, irregardless of the year or the time of collect. Would that be true? Uh, we prioritize newer data over older data. However, we do look for, for example, if a LIDAR collect uh, you know, runs down the boundary, runs down the middle of a river, and an older LIDAR collect maybe covers the whole river, and there's not significant change, but it'll make the data a little more seamless, uh, we, we will make that decision. Um, but it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis and looking at, at what you've got and where those boundaries are falling. Okay, so I guess um, that that would be my takeaway, and that would be my clarification is that 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 was your 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 mission or your goal is to to have a a, a complete point cloud representing your entire work area with the latest any any one lighter collection representing that would be most recent would take the priority to fill in that gap. Yes, um, and USGS is having us, uh, we deliver a metadata file um, with newer deliveries. I don't think this was implemented for the raised town necessarily, but there's a metadata file that should indicate what data came from our, like what the LIDAR source project was for any given area within the DEM. So another metadata file. Okay. So I understand that th this would be maybe project by project um, be because if someone was to take away from this as this is a, a viable methodology, th there are risks associated with this that I think would have to be addressed. And I wouldn't want anyone to take away from this that that's, this is a, a um, you know, a, a blanket, accepted blanket approach to filling in a project area. You know, I, you know, I this is our, I, yeah, I just, I just characterize it as understanding the data that you have available to work from. Right? Yeah, we have, I mean, until, until some, we collect lighter on a watershed basis, we kind of have to edge match the seams somehow, right? In, in this case, we had an advantage. It was the same NV5 was the gypsy contractor for the collection and for, for the entire QL2, but it took four or five years to collect the QL2 over the course of over the, the 44,000 square miles. Just, I don't know, I don't see how you could do it any other way. The watersheds are, unless your right. state's got counties delivered by watershed, you know, delineated by watersheds. We don't have that. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that, I'm, and I'm well versed on always, you know, stitching the data together and 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 matching um, adjacency and all the adjacency issues. I, I was envisioning like like a project area just consuming many different multiple years. So I, I have a better understanding of, of of how the normalization that word was used now, and uh, appreciate yeah. the discussion. Thank yeah, you. my maybe my mistake with the wording. I think I think it's I think it's an okay way to describe it, but sometimes that I I often in my in my circles don't hear the word normalization used all the time when we do, when we discuss adjacency issues. But I think in the reality is that's what we're doing. We're 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 using different techniques to um, put an elevation point uh, in 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 a in a square meter coming, and we have to make decisions on what what collection that would come from. And and some and we all know you can fill in from interpolation. You can take from direct from data sets. You know, there's just so many different sorts of ways of doing that. I think I I understand clearly now. That's what you meant by normalization. Thank you. Lucky Al gets to say that in Florida they collect lidar data by watershed. So good for them. And and to Sean's concerns, I'll mention we are um, we haven't gotten there yet. But as uh, the three depth program actually is working to produce a one meter seamless layer for CONUS, uh, and that will eventually be uh, the source data for 3DHP. Um, this will be based on you know based on the different collections at the county or you know sort of sub state level that have been collected. Uh, but that's uh, that'll be a new product um, that'll be produced. You know first for the places where uh, we have uh, 3DHP projects coming up. Um, and that should hopefully be available for the projects next year. 
Well, that that's good to know. I, I was aware of that, but I, I think it benefits everyone to hearing that. Would do you envision having any methodologies posted for that? For what's going to be your your guidance for making adjacency decisions as you bring those different data products together? Yes, I expect there'll be a report of some sort that describes the process. All right, thanks, Stephen. And then just for everyone else in the state of Minnesota, recognizing these issues of adjacency, what we did is we set out to have very large LIDAR acquisition blocks, the, you know, some of the largest that we could have and still have meaningful collections and get it done in, in one fill swoop with the vendors. But we did base it on counties, but groupings of counties that match the Huck 8s as best as we possibly could. Of course, there's it's very difficult to do, as many of you pointed out, but that's how we tackled it in Minnesota. County-based and finding counties that match as best we can with the, with the Huck 8s. Yeah, I'll stop there. Thanks. Okay, hey. thanks, Sean. Again, hey, so I just got, Lynn, I got one more. Is Eric again? I got one more comment. Okay. As as we're working across state lines, it's going to be important to understand the same the same concepts, right? And and now it's more more vendors. You know, the, these multi-state Huck eights. That's something new in the three D H P program. Right, the the state boundary issue because we're being because data will be collected by watershed, and um, I know Sue and Steve have both provided comments on that as we go through this process. Uh, at some point, I know Dennis had concerns because you know he has a lot of states surrounding him, and and my understanding is, Sue, if I have this correct, or Steve, that it would work hard to find solutions where you could basically use federal funds in the non-state areas for anyone applicant yeah linda or you know ideally states can can collaborate cooperate yeah with the areas you know and we we certainly are i think originally the vision was to collect by eight digit hydrologic unit but that's not always practical in areas where a large area of the eight digit unit is in the adjacent state and if the adjacent state is not ready to move forward with funding um, so in those cases, you know, moving down to the 10 digit hydrologic unit um, reduces the amount of um, uh, area that's in the adjacent state as well. Um, so yeah, we're looking for solutions, but it's just not practical for us to collect hydrography um, to political boundaries. Yeah, Mark. Mark Safran comments, and then there's Canada, right? <laughs> and then there's Canada, yeah. But actually, Mark, we are coordinating with Canada uh, as well, um, and we will harmonize those data. And it is a little bit of a challenge because we don't map into Canada. So there's, as you probably will know, a bit of a fault line there that we have to uh, deal with. All right. Any other activities um, that yeah, you guys Lynn. would like to share? Linda. Mark Holmes, I can give a bit of an update. Great, Mark. Uh, going on in Michigan. Uh, I'm going to wing it because I didn't really have a prepared uh, kind of update, but um, we have a lot of different pieces in motion to our, our hydro project. So we are uh, under current data development now in um, the northern lower peninsula of Michigan. So a number of Huck 8 watersheds in different stages of, of data development with um, our vendor NT5. So we have received um, a few Huck 8 watersheds um, that have been finalized. Our, we have an advisory committee that's doing a lot of, uh, involved in a lot of the quality control or review of the of the data as it comes, comes through. Um, so a lot of that activity going on right now, we have, as we've been reviewing some of the data coming through, we've noticed some, um, Obviously, the data is different than NHD. There's a lot more density to it. So just kind of getting used to looking at the data and how some of the data development modeling from the, you know, the EDH um, specifications and the process um, and some of the end results and how that looks over different landscapes um, throughout parts of the state here. So just kind of getting used to some of that and where working with MV5 as well as USGS with other people, just kind of reviewing where and 
maybe more wetland areas or areas of short vegetation where maybe the lidar was flown that um, you know didn't penetrate all the way to the ground and um, or there's um, just the ele the flat elevation and how things sort of derive so kind of the indefinite surface categories um, areas like that that kind of looking at some with some of the how how that was mapped and and um, just questions we've had around some of that and, uh, how those are handled you know within our landscapes so so that's been um, you know part of the discussion as we get the, the data uh, as well as just an education process as well for for our review team as we go through some of that uh, we are going to jump over to some of the metro detroit area later this year there's some projects going on down there that can benefit from having some newly acquired hydro data so um, i think we're going to learn a little bit more in that area uh, tied to your what you posted there but in terms of the culvert information what's needed from attributes and our discussions recently you know from folks that are doing hydrologic modeling and stuff or would like to with some of the data so you know yeah. uh, culvert diameter is obviously a big one for for flow and modeling um so uh, you know, i think that's going to be important in the future um you know it's on some of the the culvert data that, that we get when it comes in but it's not in the data so that may be like a completion thing in the future but maybe something that maybe is looked at from a 3d perspective in the future too as an attribute so uh because the line based culverts and the connection are obviously much more advantageous for a lot of point culverts like that we're getting from a you know just in terms of the using in the data processing or nv5 the data development so i i think there's going to be some sort of merging of uh based on points you know becoming lines because they're lines culvert connectors in there so i think there's some advantages of having that line work collected as culvert connectors but getting some some of those attributes um you know moved over in the future for some of that model from over here some of the groups that we're meeting with so we're going to learn a little bit more around that and you know use of the data after by some of these groups that are interested in it um, some of the data that we finalized we're going to do a soft launch to a few groups that have uh, offered to take a look at it we're also putting together guidance documents because we're looking to explain a lot of, you know, how the data was developed, how it is different from NHD, and what folks should be aware of, some of the things that we've learned along the way over the past few months. So we're in the process of doing that. We're going to put a couple of Huck 8s out to smaller groups to take a look at it, get some more feedback. So um, that's one of the things that we're doing. And uh, we did submit a DCA, so we're looking forward to hearing any updates about that here in the near future from um sounds of we'll, uh, what some of the status is there um and then uh, maintenance as well so we're continuing to look at what the data maintenance process looks like moving forward because once we would release some of this we know there's going to be some things that uh there you know there may be updates based off of um if you know folks using the data folks with more local knowledge uh out there in the landscape of um you know what may need to be uh, adjusted, added, um, as well as just change in the landscape and full lighter response. So we're having conversations around that too. And then Eric uh, Jesperson mentioned the whole hydro enforced DM. So that's something we've been talking about recently as well. Just the, we're getting that as a deliverable. So just the file size and how we're storing that data. That's just kind of another byproduct of the project too. So. Um, Anyway, I'll stop there and see if there's questions. I kind of rambled on about a number of things. So, um, well, I'm going to jump in first. And yes, please um, take a look at the culvert mapping. Good practices. We'd love to have your input. And also, I'm really interested in those uh, user guidelines you might be developing with your soft launch. And uh, maybe we could have, at some point when those mature, a uh, conversation with this group again where you can uh, share some of that guidance. Sure. Questions for Mark? Yeah, this is Phil. Um, hey, Mark, you mentioned culverts in the Detroit area, but are are you also looking at uh, connecting into the uh, stormwater engineered systems? Um, some initial discussion around that. We do have some of the um, water sewer authorities um, part of our stakeholder groups. So that's 
uh, there's no plans. It's not in our current scope or budget for adding that in uh, currently, but that, that's something that's been in, in discussion. Any other questions for Mark? Hi, Linda. This is Steve Fugate uh, from Vermont. I've got a question relating to hydro enforcement and culvert as well. Um, <clears throat> so here in Vermont, we've been having a lot of floods recently. And so there's a lot of interest in understanding flood risk and how to mitigate it and improve response recovery. And, you know, I, through these conversations with NISJIC and 3DHP, I'm fully aware of how this work plays into that. Um, fortunately, these people that are, they want to, they want to get going on stuff now, basically. Um, and I understand 3DHP, one of the main outcomes is a hydro-enforced DEM. And in fact, that hydro-enforced DEM is a prerequisite in order to achieve 3DHP objectives. So my question is, what I'd like to do is begin working on hydro enforcement. And you mentioned the culvert best practices. I, I intend to contribute to that as well because it all plays into itself. We have an existing culverts data set. I'd like to improve it, turn those points into lines and, in, and, and increase their accuracy and um, conflate data over in terms of the length and width of the culverts so that can you know, make its way into the data set. But specifically, I want to use that culvert, those culvert line features for hydro enforcement so we can begin using our LIDAR DEM for hydrologic modeling. And I'm wondering, what I'd like to do is begin the enforcement and the culvert mapping kind of in preparation for 3DHB. But what I really would like to avoid is putting in work on the front end to prepare ourselves only to find out that the work we did doesn't meet the requirements or the specifications. So. I'm, I'm hoping to learn from folks who have engaged in this work, you know, what is, what are the, what's the methodology for hydro enforcement? And um, if we were to try to square up to that now, you know, with any money that we might have available, um, how can we spec these kind of requirements any, into any kind of scope of work? So that whoever does this work is, is very clear with what's expected in terms of the level of hydro enforcement that we're requiring or asking for, and just to make sure that the work doesn't go to waste when we hopefully get some 3DHP contracts and the vendors might look at the data and say, oh, this is great, but it's not good enough to use it for 3DHP. That would be a nightmare. I'm going to throw that out to the community. I think Steve had to leave. I know he was going to have to jump off uh, Steve Achel at um, 4 o'clock. Steve Fugate, go ahead. Actually, I'm Stop. Still here. I'm just on my way out, but I heard, heard the question stuck around. And that's actually, Steve, we should probably, uh, we can talk in more detail about that. Um, but our sort of our relation, the process here is um, a little more iterative. Um, so there's a uh, often a hydro enforcement process before the delineation, but then sort of the final process uh, relies on the delineation to do um, to make sure the, the stream channels are all um, monotonic and you know appropriate, and we can get into a little more detail on that. Um, I don't know, at I mean, some other venue, uh, but it's 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 not quite as straightforward as um, sort of running you know our hydro kind of tools and making it happen. We could set that up maybe for a future discussion. Um, with the group yeah maybe yeah i appreciate that yeah and that makes sense yeah. it would be iterative so um that would be helpful thank you steve yeah so you, what you might be able to do might be a starting point but then it would be kind of enhanced um before a final product came out okay yeah so anything we might embark on it wouldn't be wasted work in that way it would it would be a step in the right direction it'd be a step it wouldn't miss only the finished product right okay great okay. Yep. All right. And with that, I actually am going to sign out. So, um, thank Bye, you. Steve. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry, Steve Fugate. Um, did you want to add something? No, hi, Linda. That was me speaking earlier. I'm good. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Steve from Vermont. Okay. Gotcha. 
Um, I do want to comment, uh, Josh, if you want to, um, Greenberg, if you want to mention you added in the uh, chat some resources you've developed. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Um, we've been busy trying to get our products out. You've heard me talk in previous meetings, but not write much down. So we're trying to remedy that. We did publish our final report for the pilot project that we did in the Stilaguamish watershed. I think I've presented here to this group on some of that work, but it's nice to have it all written down in one spot. Um, we also had Abby from our team, who uh, I think is on the call, put together some site pages and she created two different story maps, one about the um, pilot project and a, another one to catch up. We, we remapped all of our coastline to mean high water in the Puget Sound. Uh, that was a pretty big project we did before 3DHP was released, but I think it's actually going to tie in nicely to that 3DHP product. Um, it's a LIDAR-based uh, remapping of the coastline. Um, and we uh, submitted and got funding for a five-year remap. Uh, this is state funding to remap the entire state to 3DHP. There are some questions about the longevity of that funding source, but we're very excited that it, we at least got the support from the state and agencies to move forward with this project. Wow, that's big. Yes, it's, it's a, a lot to chew, but then, like I say, the money could disappear because it's, uh, right. it, it, it will, but w at least we, uh, we're moving forward. We'll be starting July 1st to remap the entire Puget Sound uh, following kind of the protocols that we developed out of the pilot and what we've learned from everyone here. And then lastly, uh, Rick Moore had a comment. Rick, you're interested in learning about methodolo methodologies from other states for blending the overlap. Um, I don't know if you want to come offline and say anything or if it's just a general outreach. Who knows? You know, who can share what they're doing? <laughs> a little bit of both. It's, it's similar to what Sean was talking about earlier where we have uh, overlapping collects from different years sometimes and trying to determine the best methodology. We're trying to use the USGS uh, DEM, um, not necessarily go back to the point cloud, but if we really need to. I did get a, a response from um, a contact I could reach out to um, from someone on here. So, um, so if anybody has any methodologies, how they get those two to blend or feather together, uh, uh, reach out to me if you could. So thank you. Right. Any other um, questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate the uh, all the input. And um, please, um, yeah, if any of these folks are doing things that relate to or that you want more information from, we can certainly make the connection. Um, as all of you know, we hold the forum and or the interest group the third Wednesday of the month, 3 to 4.30 p.m. Uh, we'll notify, hopefully you're getting these messages from NISJIC and the 3D, 3DHP for the nation interest group. Uh, we do not have a project scheduled for April. If there's something that you would like to present, uh, please get in contact with me. But I also know Sue's agreed to keep her eyes and ears open at the AWRA conference and uh, see if there's something interesting happening there. Uh, we would like to get a state project or a regional project. We've, we've been hearing a lot from the feds lately, and, and as much as we appreciate them, it's always good to hear uh, from you, you all as well. So if you have something, let me know. And with that, any last comments, questions, concerns? No, I'm not taking concerns today. I'll take that one back. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, and we will see you guys next month. And those of you traveling, enjoy your meetings next week. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, guys.